Hey. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the events committee meeting held on Monday, 11th of April, 2022. Uh, this meeting is being visually and audio recorded for publication on the Thatcham Town Council YouTube channel. You have duly been warned. Uh, right, we'll move on straight down to the agenda items. Apologies for absence. How will you go? <laughs> uh, with Chairman. Yeah. Uh, just prior to this meeting, we received an apology from Ellen Crumley and in her place, Councillor, sorry, Councillor Ellen Crumley and in her place, Councillor Richard Crumley uh, will be you. attending. Thank you very much. Item two, declarations of interest. Anybody have any? Sorry, Chairman, we have had, I've had Lord Cottom's apologies, sir. Oh, okay. We didn't ask if there are any other apologies, but sorry. Um, yeah, so Lord S. Cotton is also an apology. Thank you. Uh, item two, declarations of interest. <coughs> no. Okay, three, to take and read as the minutes of the meeting held on the 8th of November. Does that find a seconder? Uh, all those in favour? Okay, thank you. And then item B, to receive and consider adoption of the minutes of the events working party held on the 7th of February. Uh, second, Councillor Leacock, all those in favour? Thank you very much. Okay. Item four, matters arising from the previous meeting. John? Uh, Chairman, uh, there's no matters that uh, certainly we wish or I wish to uh, provide, Chairman. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, item five, fly a flag for the Commonwealth. Um, to receive a note or, or to receive and note a report from the events civic officer on the fly the flag of the Commonwealth held on the 14th of March, uh, which was attended by myself and uh, the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Brooks. So, um, I suppose that we note that particular item. No. In favor. Nice event, uh, Chairman. Yeah. Was indeed. Thank you. Um, item six Spring into Thatcham. To receive a verbal report, report from the events manager on the Spring into Thatcham event, which took place in the High Street and the Broadway on the 26th of March. So, John, that will be over to you. Yeah, I've just really. Um, what I wasn't able to attend that that particular event, um, and we were a little bit short staffed, and um, so I'd really welcome feedback from members in terms that did attend that event or have received feedback. Just in quick summary, just to sort of um, confirm that we commissioned um, from Welcome Back funding uh, Momo events um, to manage the event on our behalf um, and as the chairman has said it involved the closure of the high street as well as the temporary car park area in the center of the broadway um, so we're, we have had fit some feedback from uh events team members that, that did attend and we have had some feedback from uh some of the businesses but i'd be keen to um to to know if any of the members their feedback thoughts on this particular event particularly since it's an event that that we are looking to also stage this this style of event in terms of involving the closures uh within thatcham festival um as a repeat of the big thatcham fest off which you might recall happened last year last october thank you chairman Thank you. Um, well, if I just kick it off, the the, the fest off uh, went extremely well. Uh, this particular event was perhaps a little short on numbers, um, and a lot of people were saying they they didn't receive uh, any uh, prior warning to it or any uh, advertising that they were aware of. A lot of people didn't know it was happening, uh, and we even had people who stumbled across the event. 
and were quite happy that they stumbled across the event. But like I say, they weren't too aware. Um, I do know um, from the your assistant, Georgina, that um, Momo had indicated they'd sent flyers out to people um, you know, along the high street, etc. cetera. Uh, but I live on the high street and I certainly didn't get anything through my letterbox or any of my neighbors either. So it was perhaps, um, like I say, it, it could have been advertised a little better and I think the response would have been a lot better also. Uh, but the event itself went very well. Um, and I liked the idea. Um, also, another comment that I received, um, we felt that the kebab van could have been moved down a little bit as it was front and centre, um, <laughs> right where everybody else would have wanted to perhaps dance uh, with the, the music videos that were going on. But other, other than that, it was a, a nice concept uh, and something, as you say, that could be repeated. Uh, and if it was done, I say the, like the big fest off uh, in the autumn and this event in the spring, I think that would work quite nicely for the town, you know, looking to the future. Um, Councillor Pike and then Councillor Lillycroft. Yeah, I, I think all the, I agree with your comments. I think also that the publicity which the we the received by email, and I think it was online, wasn't very clear about what, what the event was. But they said it was happening, but didn't give any details, so people weren't where what they might be coming for. Okay, okay. thank you. Councillor Lillycroft? Uh, yes, thank you, Jim. Um, um, again, I agree with those comments, I think. Um, uh, couldn't stay too long, but the time I was there, um, I, it seemed to be a nice buzz. Um, we were a little bit light on numbers, and I did spot a few comments online suggesting that, that uh, maybe the, the publicity could have been a bit stronger for the event in advance. Um, but the people who were there seemed to be enjoying it. Uh, and in fact, there were queues for one or two stands. I think the, uh, where the children were getting uh, makeup or tattoos. I think but when I was there, there was a long queue for that stand. Yeah. So there was a fair bit of, fair bit of activity. Uh, I saw comments as well about the kebab band in the middle of the um, dance area, yeah. uh, which was something which I imagine could be easily remedied. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, otherwise, I thought it was, it was a successful evening. Yeah, lovely. Anybody else? Uh, Councillor? Oh, thanks, Chairman. Uh, yes, Ellen, Ellen and I uh, attended. I've been lucky with the weather. It was uh, bright and sunny and very pleasant at the end of uh, March, and this is a pleasant start to the evening. Yes, as everybody else has said, it seemed a bit quiet on numbers at first. We met up with some other uh, councillors, had a bit of a chat, and the numbers seemed to be growing, and it got pretty... Uh, and it was pretty jolly and pretty well attended. We didn't stay for a desperately long time, but it was an overall a favourable uh, impression. If there's been a problem with advertising, then no doubt it can be remedied next time by by learning from from the uh, uh, from the problem, ensuring that there's a better advertising strategy next time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I say, uh, <coughs> John, we uh, appreciate the. You know, the staffing numbers were down uh, at that time. Um, but another example was uh, Sazim, who at the fest off sold out, you know, way before the event finished. And, you know, he was absolutely flabbergasted, uh, but he didn't even know. Yeah, otherwise, he would have put his barbecue out there again. So um, I think Momo could have done a little better in letting the businesses know in, in some way before the event. But there we go. Uh, thank you, Chairman, and thank you, Councillors. Appreciate all the feedback. Thank you. Right. Um, so that was the item six. So we move on to item seven, the Queen's Platinum Jubilee celebrations of 2022, which are quickly approaching. So they'll be here before we know it. Um, so, John, did you want to just update us on what's going on with that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're as interestingly as Councillor Brooks um, was talking to, to me just before this meeting, we are, we're poised to go live with the publicity. Um, we've got press releases pending and we really wanted to um, just progress from the last meeting, the working party meeting we had with with members. So just to give a quick update and we'll and I'd like to do that sequentially, the first event on June the 2nd 
is the beacon singular lighting event. Um, it's pro progressing well. We believe that we will have a mass choir involving all five primary schools with numbers at anywhere between 100 to 200 school children just within the choir. Our plan is to start the event at 8.30 with um, activities that families can get involved with prior to the beacon lighting at 9.45. We're following in a way a template that's been set up nationally um, that, that a lot of the cities and towns have been encouraged to do. This would involve a town crier at lunchtime with a proclamation, but that would be within, we're proposing that would be in the, the Broadway. Uh, and then later on in the evening, because of the numbers, um, Councillor uh, Crumley recommended in the last meeting that we perhaps look at a, another venue beyond Thatch and Broadway. Um, we're in agreement with that and we're proposing Dunstan Green as the venue because it can accommodate uh, larger numbers. Um, we did, I mention with uh, Cold Ash Brass Band have confirmed an involvement um, to present uh, material. Uh, and again, that's in tandem with a recommendation from um, nationally that, uh, that, that, that there are brass bands and that there is a bugle uh, playing at a particular time in the evening. So. The arrangements are progressing pretty smoothly for that one. And I, I, I'll just pause on, on that for members' comments and thoughts, if, if I may, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Brooks. Thank you, Chairman. I, I can imagine Dunstan Green being better given that number of people just in the choir. It's a shame, but uh, you can't really get it uh, right in the broad way um, with, with what we hope will be hundreds and hundreds of people. And if you've got 200 people in the choir, you might have 500 people in the audience, the mums and dads and grannies and aunties and uncles. So I think Dunstan Green is uh, a good pick. Uh, uh, through you, Chairman, um, I should know, but are we looking to offer food concessions for various bands to come up and uh, all that crowd of people have something and then go and get a cup of tea or a, a current bun, um, perhaps on the Broadway car park? Um, I, uh, sorry, the... Um, Bluecoats uh, car park, um, just something adjacent where somebody can go. And, and I think that may get some income if we do a food, food concession. I think John may have thought about that. But if you've got people around there for a couple of hours, they get a bit bit of the munchies. Ch Chairman, um, Chairman, can I c come yeah, back yeah, to fine. Councillor Brooks? Um, thank you. Yeah, we, we talked about that as a team uh, in terms of... Um, as a town council officers, we felt that by putting in on refreshments and making the event larger, it would create a different event that we would then need to put in the necessary infrastructures with toilets and waste. So at the moment, the plan is that it would be uh, an event that would start at uh, 8.30 and finish at 9.45, but with some art and craft <laughs> activity for families to be involved with, with a Jubilee themed uh, activity. We, so we've thought about it, but we haven't, um, that isn't part of the plan at the moment, but we'd be willing to do, obviously willing to, to discuss this, Chairman and Councillor Brooks. Thank you. If I can come back, I mean, if you light the beacon at 9.45, they won't all disappear at 9.46. So your period, I think, where the, the people will be mustering is 8.30, yes, probably through to 10, 10.15. Um, I'm not co convinced, personally, that we would need to suddenly put infrastructure like toilets in when somebody has a hot dog and a Coke. Um, at that stage of the evening, they can probably manage to get home before they need a, the loo. Uh, we're not talking five or six hours of activity. So I, I, I'm not saying we decide anything here, but we look again. I like the idea of what you're saying, arts and crafts stores, and you know, you're looking to get hundreds and hundreds of people there. Um, and given our budget situation, any income from a concession or two would be welcome, I think. Yeah, 
Okay, and Councillor Councillor Pike's going to come in. Yeah, I've just been checking on Google Street View, and the um, Lucote School car park has a fixed barrier, fixed type barrier. It's, it's not it's not swingable. Okay. Well, that's detail into the uh, staff yeah. looking at. It. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Why don't we come back in, John? Yeah. Um, a, a couple of things on that, and I should have brought to to members' attention that there's a plan um, that the old blue coat school in, which is in the report, but I need I should have brought it to the members' attention that old blue coat school in tandem with Thatch and History Society are planning to put on an exhibition, a photographic exhibition with historical interpretation, that's my understanding, in the old Blue Coat School. And they'd like to um, have the exhibition open uh, during the time of the, um, the beacon lighting and running all the way through um, that bank holiday weekend. Um, because at one point we were we were thinking about trying to use that car park space, um, so that's that needs to be made available. We feel for people wanting to perhaps go to see that exhibition. Um, going back to the second point, I think it would be quite uh, it would be fairly easy for us and straightforward to consider our councillor Brooks a a small amount of catering concession. And we can put the onus on the responsibility of of cleaning and clearing up on the concessionaires as well. Okay, thank you, Councillor Livy. Thank you, Chair. I mean, I, I agree with with Councillor Brooks. It would be nice to have some concessions there, particularly if there is a, going to be a large group of people for a couple of hours. Um, I'm not so sure that I agree that nobody will need the toilet. Um, is uh, I mean, maybe one. One option is 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 to have the the public toilets open longer on that evening, so that we can at least point point people towards the Broadway, even though it's a little bit of a, a stroll from from Dunstan Green. Um, if yeah, I mean if we're if we're not planning to put extra infrastructure in place, then maybe that's another option that we have on the evening. And the Blue Coat School does have a, a bathroom in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I suspect there might be a long queue because I guess there's only the one in there. Isn't there? <laughs> so, yeah, certainly. But just look for the uh, uh, Mr. Sackett to give us advice and uh, you know take it into consideration. I, I like the idea, Chairman. That uh, perhaps the I mean, if they're that desperate, they walk to the Broadway. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, just just relating that to the uh, to the street market, uh, there were some comments online about the fact that at one point, I'm not sure at what time in the evening, but the public toilets weren't open and people were were looking to use them uh, during during the course of that evening. So I think it, it is quite you know the key to uh, to sort of tie the two things together. And if we can extend the the time of the opening of the toilets uh, during the um, uh, uh, during the beacon event, then, then I would have thought that that would be a good thing to do. Yeah, okay, thank you. I was trying to cancel my car parking. So we've got the the Ken, the um, Kingston Centre, but if we're having that number of people. We might we might. That might be not be sufficient. So we were thinking about if, if, if other uh, places could be made available or, or at least signposted so that we, we don't end up with parts of the road getting um, smuggled up. Okay. Uh, well, we'd hope people would walk there. Mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. John, you wanted to come back in? Chairman, yeah, I mean, we've, we've we've already thought through the um, the issue of car parking, and one of the things we were keen to do is direct people, as you say, on the into the Kingston car park as well as the the car park at, up at Frank Hutchins, which is called Bradley Moore Square. Thank, Thank you very much indeed. So that's 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 within our draft press release that that that's that's our plan, and to encourage mm -hmm. and put that quite strongly as a on the um, on the information to people, so they understand that that parking is going to be a premium. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other items? No. Okay. Um, thank you much, John. Oh, gone. Sorry, on. Sorry, Chairman. Not 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 for that particular one, but I'll, I'll take on board what you thought. Uh, what what 
the, the committee have suggested, and um, we can definitely look at those uh, th those elements. Uh, I just wanted to, to just really talk to, just continue with the, the other Jubilee events very quickly. Yeah, by all means. Um, ju ju just a continuation really uh, from previous uh, meetings, the Platinum in the Park event is running smoothly um, and in place. And, and just to remind members the plan and the support that Thatcham Town Council are directly offering is towards a fireworks display, a, a giant screen which would show the link to the Palace Party and supporting that particular event with a, uh, with a stage that um, the Memorial Hall Foundation will be programming. So that's that particular event on June the 4th. Um, it seems to be going according to plan. Um, unless members have got any questions, I'd, I'd kind of really just then move on to talk about the legacy project and suggest that perhaps Councillor Brooks give, gives an update on that one. Okay. Can I just, uh, I just have one question, Chair. Um, you, you say, uh, sorry, uh, for the Chair to John. John, you say you're following uh, a national template with the activities that are going on in each day. Um, I, I had some questions from neighbours recently about a street party. Um, so is it the national plan that if there are any street parties, they're all on the Sunday? Yeah. Yes. 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 Um, Chairman, that that that's correct to uh, to answer, Councillor uh, Lily Crop. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, can, can, can I continue? Sorry. Can I give a little bit more information on that? Uh, well, can we take him in order? Yeah. We'll 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 let Councillor Brooks give us an update on the yep. project, and then we'll move on. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I very encouraged about this project in many ways we did a soft launch on it we got two or three interested people and started to fan out from them rather interested people in picking up um the the the, the project and the vision we're now moving on to perhaps a, a, a harder launch in terms of a poster that is in development um press releases with where we're at but if i was to say to you our vision is 45 scenes, and today I snagged the 18th crafter for them, which I'm very pleased about that we're, you know, 40% of the way. And that's without really sort of reaching out. This is just a, net, a small network of people. There's still a lot of people out there who are capable who we need to get to come forward. We've now settled on a smaller uh, scene square, 40 centimeters by 40 centimeters, 16 inches by 16 inches or thereabouts in old money um, and I had a very good meeting today with Simon Jardine we know Simon Jardine do we he was uh, the artist for some of the street um, furniture and um, I think what we're now proposing and this will be news to John Sackett is that we put them on we frame each scene and we then put those on the wall and then a cabinet later if you imagine the cabinet is going to be bigger than that behind you, sir, it's going to be a big thing. And I, I think we'll put the frames up professionally, nice square, um, before we go to that stage. Our deadline, if you like, I've got a soft deadline of February um, and a hard deadline of the mayor making in 2023, uh, where you potentially uh, unveil it as the new mayor takes over. I'm hoping to have three or four at the June uh, event uh, because we'll hold on the fun on, on the park, uh, Platinum and Park. We'll have a tent. The, the clerk tells me we'll, we'll erect a tent over there and we can start to display some of these and promote it afresh. So, so far, so very good. Good. Um, Okay, John, back to you. Yeah, um, thank you, Chairman. Just just really wanted to um, go back to Councillor Lillycrop's point about the um, community events or the community parties and the national template. That That is all set for, for June the 5th. And you can kind of, there's been some 
good work that that the the council um, both officers and members have pulled together to ensure that West Berkshire Council um, are being far more proactive in terms of pushing that. And you can see in the um, the report that there is now a dedicated um, website that will be that we can um, advertise to Thatcham residents. Um, which which encourages and supports the the use of street parties. Um, coincidentally, um, the churches together had already um, way back had uh, had already uh, been aware of the fact that that particular June the fifth of Sunday was going to be a big um, uh, encouragement for a community event, and their planning in Kennett School an event called the Big Jubilee Lunch. Um, thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Um, any questions from the floor? No. Um, so, if that's that's just the the, the roundup of the events. Um, do you, you want to go on to the, the item four on there, the financial implications, or is this is pretty much wrapped up? Um, not, not, not for me, Chairman. We we went through that other working party in terms of the event funding okay. for all the Jubilee events, and 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 the points in that report are, are really as as reminder uh, reminders to the um, the events committee that the thirteen k um, is funding from the the reserves. Um, I think that point hadn't been agreed where it was going to come from, so um, the town clerk might advise me. Uh, um, that actually this particular point is just clarifying that that amount is going to be coming from reserves. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Um, right, if we can then move on to uh, item eight, which is the Thatcham Family Fund Day 2022. Yeah, I really wanted to 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 put the point in, in in the report that things are progressing well in terms of family fun day and and, and really as as as, as members i am sh are sure aware that family fun day is 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 pretty much the one of the main if not the main events in the thatcham town council calendar um it's progressing very well but we we feel and we talked about it as a team um in, in terms of officers and we felt that perhaps there was a, a need to sort of involve um and certainly ask the opinion of the the members in terms of the direction of family fun day and how it could be supported and developed we we put in the report four kind of key areas that we've identified that perhaps you know that 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 uh, not necessarily weaknesses but but areas if the family fund day is to grow and certainly it's growing anyway you know the 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 if i can remind members that that last last year we um we actually made family fund dates because we were still worried about covid and members agreed that we would downscale family fun day a little. However, <laughs> the attendances were perhaps the, the, the largest attendances that um, we had ever seen at family fun day. So we're, we're keen to, to sort of get the opinion of, of, of members in terms of thoughts, in terms of how things can grow. I'd just like to sort of point out, but there may be other areas, but we've, we've, we've in our report, um just mentioned four particular areas that i'd just like to mention uh chairman yeah one is the whole idea of volunteers uh we had a large pool of volunteers and we thank members for contributing to that large pool and it's an ongoing um issue that we do need a large team to support family fun day if it's if it's going to grow the way we'd like it to grow uh, and the issues there are attracting and managing volunteers. The second we we feel we'd just like to remind members that it started off as a sports 
Family Fun Day started off mainly as a sports event. It's now grown and that's quite, that's fine. It's grown to be much more uh, um, a community event that embraces not just sport, but leisure and, and all the activities that community organizations um, within Thatcham um, uh, showcase. Um, but even so, we believe there's a gap within there in terms of sports clubs and perhaps connections with sports clubs. I'm going to I'm going to mention that that, for example, we um, the Thatcham, Thatcham and Newbury or Newbury and Thatcham Hockey Club, which is based at Hennick, uh, have developed a major real L festival that's within Newbury. Um, there's so there's there's perhaps some thought there that can extend to the next point in the agenda when we talk about Thatcham Festival as well is how we perhaps involve our sports clubs uh, in in more detail and perhaps being a bit innovative with them or suggestive with them in terms of how ways that they could get involved. Um, the third element is all to do with the environment. Uh, we would say, and, and obviously it's a big agenda item on a separate agenda, so to speak, um, in terms of uh, a separate committee working party in terms of environmental considerations. Uh, and we believe that Family Fund Day could be a, a really effective showcase to showcase um, some of the initiatives and, and, and new initiatives and developments. Uh, and we're, we're attempting to invest in that in terms of Family Fun Day, but we feel that perhaps there's things that we could still be missing. Um, and the final area is, is on-site activities. We're looking to create perhaps more zones and, and some more ideas, particularly this year, there's a fancy dress competition. We'd like to sort of look at the whole idea of, of, of Jubilee as the theme and encourage the storeholders to be involved. Um, and within that, we believe that perhaps we're still missing storeholders, uh, new community organisations within Thatcham or existing ones that, that perhaps haven't been involved for, for a few years. Um, we've extended some items over the years, such as, such as dance as, as, a, as, as an area, and we believe that that can grow. But we're keen for, for members' thoughts and potentially one thing that, that maybe maybe not this year uh, but, but potentially having a working party or or thoughts like that where members can get an, involved at a more creative and earlier planning time so then they're kind of that's my kind of thoughts and I'd, I'd really like to garner the thoughts and opinions of of, of members really thank you chairman okay, thank you uh, anybody like to yeah, councillor Lillicott? Thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, I mean, one thought I, I had last year, uh, I mean, you, you've mentioned that, um, uh, John, getting more uh, concessions involved and commercial stands and so on. I mean, I, I, I did feel last, last year it was a great event, um, but the, the, <coughs> the few catering stands that were there did have very long queues. And I think I remember talking to you about it at the time, uh, and you said it was actually quite hard to attract catering stands to the event. Uh, I wonder whether based on the success of last year's event, whether that might be easier this year. Um, also a, a kind of tangential thing um, connected with that, you were talking about getting the, the sports clubs more involved. Uh, just anecdotally, um, I, my, my office in Bracknell, I work with a, uh, a member of a, a Bracknell hockey team uh, who visits uh, Newbury and Thatcher to play hockey at Henning on a regular basis. And she says one of the great things about coming to, to matches at Henning is the uh, superb quality of the catering provided by uh, the hockey club um, to visiting teams. I don't know the lady involved, but apparently she's something of a legend. Um, and I wonder whether there may be an opportunity to get the hockey club involved in extending the range of uh, catering outlets. Um, but before uh, you come back in, John, uh, I would confirm today that I spoke with somebody who's providing a pizza oven uh, 
who had been asked by um, Georgina if uh, I could contact them, and they've agreed that they will be providing pizza for the Thatcher and Family Fund there. Um, but yeah, so uh, do you have any response for Councillor Earlycrop with regards to contacting the, the hockey club? Um, we do have a contact at the hockey club. We've we've we haven't we've struggled to sort of um, get much further really. Um, and we would try to involve them last year, um, and then because we we knew last year that they were organising a real ale festival, the hockey club, the hockey club in Newbury, and we kind of felt well, great, but. You know, let's have some. <laughs> why can't we have some of your expertise with within yeah. within Thatcham? So, um, I, I mean, we we can certainly um, continue to to make those inroads. I think one of the things we're perhaps looking for is, and we don't want to imp impress even more. I guess in terms of you know the time that members are already contributing to to lots of committees and and and, and this evening the events committee. But I'm wondering whether, you know, Councillor Lily, Lily Crop, you know, you, you may be able to sort of maybe, you know, possibly, you know, the idea of perhaps having a uh, more of a, 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 wor a working party or a planning party that talks about, you know, may, may, maybe a combination of Faction Festival and Family Fun Day. And we look at the planning of both of these events in earnest, you know, for next year, um, and put on the agenda some of the, you know, some of the thoughts that we're we're teasing out at this particular meeting, um, and, and I I wouldn't mind members' thoughts on that. Okay, lovely, uh, Councillor Cobb. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, as as far as on-site volunteers go, we we do of course have a. A, a strong community ethos within Thatcham. Uh, I wonder, um, asking the likes of you, 3A, the guards, uh, the guides, sorry, churches together, scouts usually are fairly well um, tied up with doing the, the, the bar, their barbecue, assuming we're going to have that this year, even the historical society, just all the societies that we have in town. If we get one from each, we've probably got about 30 volunteers. Yeah. Um, the sports club participation, um, I always kind of look at these things from the other angle, is what, what's in it for me? Um, so from the sports club point of view, what's in it for them? And I don't have an answer with it for this at the moment, um, but if we can come up with something that is going to actually get them to get more members or have the opportunity of getting more members, assuming that's what they want, uh, then that might be a, a way of um, getting them getting them in. I know the, the, the rugby club has done touch rugby, etc. But I guess it's a question of actually talking to the the individual clubs, um, which I'm more than happy to do, some of them, um, just to, to find out what would interest them uh, in terms of, of, of them uh, attracting more people to to be able to, to, to join them. Um, ditto with the dance zone. Um, every dance school in creation is always looking for new pupils mm -hmm. um, and some way of attracting, making it attractive for, for them to be able to do some, some advertising and attract new, new pupils or even potentially suggesting it to them um, that they do a small focus on, on that. Sonia Brown, I know, did a huge amount of work with um, the, uh, the, the, the festival and also with things in the Broadway. Um, that she's done. I don't actually think she used it as a vehicle for attracting new silver tappers or whatever they call them. Yes. Um, that might be a, a way of attracting and getting more people involved. West Bucks Ballet School, there's loads of other, loads of other schools as well um, that I feel sure um, locally. So that was the sum total of my view. So, Jack. Okay, thank you. Uh, while uh, I'll, I'll just jump in with Councillor Cole's comments before I bring in Councillor Brooks. Um, but when um, he said, you know, from the sports group's point of view, you know, what's in it for them? Um, I'll tell you what's in it for the, the mayor of Thatcher was uh, a donation from 
uh, thatching tornadoes of 250 pounds plus because they were doing a you know fastest shot. They had a little um, radar set up. Kids were coming along and hitting the ball into the net and uh, recording their times. So for a fee, so that that worked quite well for the mayor's charities. Uh, and, and there were a number uh, of different football teams. They're doing very similar things. So it's Councillor Brooks. I, I, I like Councillor Cole's idea of reaching out to these organisations for volunteers. I would imagine uh, John Sackett has email addresses where he can do a shout out, uh, you know, and if you build out the register, I feel you, sh you, you must have done, you can slice and dice that register to just reach out, A, for help, B, to publicise, C, for money, whatever. You know, that, that's, um, that's something I would have thought was in place. But to your broader point, John, um, I like the idea of after the fun day, you convene a joint officer um, member working party, a, a task and finish group, one meeting rather than a standing sort of working party. And you do it quite quickly after the event while it's fresh in people's minds and you analyze what went right, what went wrong, what would be better, and you capture that from both members who were there and officers and staff who were there. And you do similarly after the festival and you capture it then. Don't conflate the two. Um, and then you're getting the instant feedback from maybe a couple of members who volunteer for a, a meeting, um, plus staff's views as well. So that's how I would respond to that and be happy to be part of that this year. Perhaps it's the mayor is a standing <laughs> member of that, that working party, if you like. But that's how I would get this, this feedback loop, which means you capture the issues there and then and the opportunities. Thank you. Um, did you want to come back on that at all, John? Um, only to say this: there's a mix of very good feedback there, which I would I would like to take on board. I, what, one of the things that that came straight out to my head was that actually there are some good examples of practice, such as that from tornadoes, which we we should be able to say to other sports clubs: look, if you are innovative and come up with something clever, you, then this is the amount of money and new members that you can raise. So it's 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 almost like having a case study, which we can then sell on to um, to to sports clubs that aren't getting involved or are worried that perhaps in the past they have and they didn't get many members from it. And we have so we have that good example of practice. I'd I'd like to to take on board Councillor Brooks's suggestion. I think that's a that's a really useful way forward for sure um because it's it's not just officers it's 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 members as well and we have a little bit more of a creative way of developing and moving forward from from our successes and and things that that haven't gone quite, perhaps quite so well um so yeah and the, the the volunteer base yes a lot of those organizations we do already write to but maybe we're just missing something because last year we we struggled you know we we, we got the councillors fantastic involvement and support um and the chamber of commerce are, are obviously the rotary sorry are obviously completely involved already in in their event so and a lot of those organizations such as the scouts the rbl and what have you, they're already involved in the fun day so it's almost right where else can we go <laughs> um but I think I think it's a lot of good feedback from 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 members and and we'll take that on board and if perhaps we could if need needs be between now and family fun day perhaps we can get back to specific members because of some of their comments I'd be grateful thank you thank you uh, councillor Carl. Uh, thank you, Jane. Nothing uh, major. It's just I realised I should have declared an interest as a member of the Thatch and Rotary Club. <laughs> <laughs> OK, there we go. Um, so, yeah, so what we'll do is anybody who comes up with some ideas, obviously we'll feed that back to John uh, prior to the, the next meeting and uh, hopefully have some good ideas about moving forward with some of those suggestions. Um, with the, that, taken care of and move on to item nine, other events. You just wanted to give a verbal uh, update on the following events. 
2022? Yeah, just to confirm to members, and it's this, this the date of United Service and Remembrance has been drifting, but we now have a confirmed date that um, the, the church are happy with and um, my understanding is the, the mayor and the deputy mayor are happy with, which is Sunday, 17th of July. And the Thatcher Festival? Um, I think we can probably, um, my, my feeling is um, it, it's much the same in terms of, I think things are progressing well. Um, but again, and, and, and I think we've done some good work over the years in terms of Thatcham Festival and developing and expanding it. But there are areas that we still have identified that perhaps we could do more and uh, are looking to see how we can develop more. And, and, and they are in, in no particular order. That's to do with the environment and seeing if we can put that as a, a bigger item on the agenda. In 2019, um, hang on a second, 2020, sorry, we worked with the Green Fair, um, the Green Festival. Um, we weren't able to because they, they weren't doing any planning. Uh, they dropped their own event in 2021 last year. Um, but there's perhaps more we can do on that. Um, we also want to ensure that new organisations or existing ones or creative ideas are developed. You know, we've, we've, we've had, we feel a good record. You know, we, we, we last year, we, we found someone that was keen to do a, a, com a potentially a, co a comedy club in Thatcham and using the festival as a springboard. Um, we been a um, wind orchestra made contact with us and we're keen to to do some development work within Thatcham. Um, we, we've worked closely with Greenham Control Tower that hadn't been involved in previous years. Um, Hungerford Bookshop and, 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 and local schools to get their involvement, but last year was, was a problem with schools. Um, so it's, 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 we think there's opportunities for further involvement. We, we struggle, we are still struggling with the demographic of 10 to 24 year olds um, and 20 to 40 year olds and getting them involved in the festival. Um, we've tried with things like trying to encourage things like open mic nights. It's, it seems to be, still seems to be a tough one in terms of bringing that demographic into uh, the festival. So really, we again were kind of keen to get members' thoughts and and, and perhaps it's not for this particular events committee, um, but I just wanted to put that put that on the table. Okay, thank you. Uh, anybody wish to comment on that? Uh, well, when you talk about festivals and you you kind of hit on it with uh, the the hockey club. But some people had mentioned to me about a beer festival during our, our Thatcham festival. So perhaps that might be able to be incorporated in some way, uh, an event on the Broadway, perhaps. Anyway, uh, with that, then we shall move on to item 10 uh, to receive a note incoming expenditure costs, uh, which we all have a copy of here. Um, did anybody wish to comment on any of that? Or uh, Councillor Cole? Yeah, you would expect nothing less of me, Chair. Um, it was uh, just, just, just whether what is actually on the on the spreadsheet is is a true reflection of, of absolute reality, or whether there are some earmarked reserves or, or something else additional which is um, not taking been taken into account. Because on the face of it, it's a uh, overspend of about 15,000. I just wonder whether that was actually accurate or, or whether there's a little mark reserves to, to come in or, or the other additional um, income that, uh, that hasn't yet been received. That's the, the budget against the actual year to date. Okay, thank you. And John? Um, yes, Chairman. Um, in terms of answering Councillor Cole's uh, comments, I've, I've spoken to the finance officer that. There's there's approximately between seven and eight thousand pounds which of 
monies that will be transferred to, to next financial year that's within that uh, payment schedule. So there are items that we've, we've had, such as the stage bus, um, such as some of the Jubilee spend content, which needs to be transferred and will be transferred into next financial year. So um, there were there are also a number of areas which we, that 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 there are you, you can kind of see that that's only the the half of it, uh, Chairman. Um, there are other areas, and the the um, we'd like to discuss and and give have a little bit more time to put and and check those items before the next F and G. Um, committee meeting, Chairman. Thank you. Um, that meets Councillor College view approval. Thank you, Chair. Um, so from that, then I shall propose that we um, note this, uh, the expenditure. Is that fine a second? Councillor uh, Council Cole, all those in favour? Thank you very much. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I will conclude the meeting. Thank you very much. <clears throat>